They said it was impossible. That energy couldn't just come from nothing. No gas, no solar, no wind, just movement. And yet, deep inside a garage that looks like any other on Earth, something is spinning. Quietly, relentlessly, defiantly. No, this isn't a pitch for a new sci-fi series. It's a reality hiding in plain sight. And at the heart of it all, the ghost of Nikola Tesla. Speaking of Tesla and electricity, what, what did you think about Tesla's initial idea that Westinghouse shot down to sort of broadcast electricity so that people could just pull it out of the air? Yeah, so the, the people in the Nikola Tesla fan club somehow feel that he got wronged in his life, okay? Yes, that Tesla, the man who envisioned a world powered by free wireless electricity, the man who wanted to give the world energy so abundant, so accessible, it would rival air and water, and the man the world's most powerful players desperately tried to forget. A striking number of his most valuable and confidential papers were reported missing, and to this day, they've never been found. They buried his dreams beneath a heap of patents, lawsuits, and ridicule. His grandest project, the Wardenclyffe Tower, was dismantled. His lab notes mysteriously vanished. But the one thing they couldn't destroy was the idea. And that idea, it's back. If you took a tour of the average modern home, you would find one of these in nearly every single room. In fact, I think it could be argued that the electric motor is the most widely used device in the world. Starting in the bathroom, we would find the exhaust fan in the ceiling. Walk into any bedroom and you're gonna find a ceiling fan or possibly box fans in the window or on the floor. If you have a washer and dryer, that's two more right there. But in the kitchen is where you're gonna find a mother load. We're talking about garbage disposal, dishwasher, your microwave has two of them, your refrigerator has one. These are all motors that we found before we even leave our homes. But the induction motor in particular, which is what this guy comes from, is the one that I find most intriguing. This guy right here is what converts the electricity from your wall into mechanical motion. For example, spinning your clothes or spinning your ceiling fan. It's called the Liberty Engine 2.0, a name that sounds more like a political movement than a power system. But what this unassuming device does has the potential to upend everything from your electric bill to global energy markets. Picture this, a modest frame made of aluminum alloy and resin. No glowing panels or high-tech interfaces. Just a rotor, a few copper coils, and some magnets. It looks like a science fair project until it kicks into gear. Then it becomes something else entirely. There's no fuel tank, no plug, just a tug of a pull cord, and the rotor begins to spin. Inside are powerful N52 neodymium magnets, the kind that could rip a wrench out of your hand. As they pass over coils scavenged and rewound from microwave transformers, they generate alternating current exactly the kind of electricity that powers your home. The Liberty Engine 2 features a single phase asynchronous motor with four poles, 220 volts, 50 highs, 3 fourths horsepower, 0 0.55 kilowatts, and 1500 RPM with a starting capacitor of 20 microfarads. The maximum power consumption of the motor during operation is 60 watts. Even though it is a 550 watt motor, this is because it consumes very little power due to the elimination of eddy currents and the absence of magnetic braking. The motor rotates freely without any resistance. But here's where it gets eerie. Once it starts generating electricity, it feeds a portion of that power back into itself. That's right, it powers its own motor, a feedback loop. And as long as the rotor keeps spinning, the system keeps producing electricity. No batteries, no external power source, no tricks. This isn't perpetual motion. And no, it doesn't defy physics. But it does dance around the limits of what we've accepted as possible. It uses kinetic momentum and magnetic force with such surgical efficiency that it becomes nearly self-sustaining. Tests show a consistent 230 volts of AC output, steady enough to run everything from an iMac to a power drill. We're talking about a home-sized generator that fits on a table but performs like something designed for disaster relief zones or space missions.
In one uncut video, the team behind the Liberty engine took it to an isolated location. No grid, no power lines, just them, the machine, and the camera. They plugged in tools, computers, even a water pump, and it didn't flinch. The voltage held steady, the rotor didn't stall, and the device barely got warm. So how is this not breaking news on every major outlet? Well, maybe because it threatens to burn down the energy industry's business model. Let's talk about stakes. Right now, global energy is a $7 trillion market. Power monopolies don't want devices like this in every home. Because if you can generate your own electricity cleanly, quietly, on demand, they lose control. They lose customers. They lose money. In a world increasingly threatened by energy instability, the need for decentralized power solutions has never been more urgent. Traditional grids are fragile, aging and vulnerable to everything from cyber attacks to extreme weather events. Just one major outage, like those seen recently in Texas or California, can cripple millions of lives in minutes. Um, electromagnetic energy is communicating between us. I, I see you, that's because visible light is reflecting off of your scalp, okay, to me. It's reflecting off of my nose back to you. You can ask how much energy is in that? Well, not much. It's not much energy in a visible light photons. If you stay there long enough, you might feel a little warmth from it. But no, you're not going to drive a car with that energy. You're not going to run a motor with it. Okay. Entire economies hinge on a centralized model that fails spectacularly when pushed too far. Now imagine if every home, every remote village, every hospital had its own independent power source. A solution like the Liberty Engine 2.0 doesn't just promise convenience, it offers resilience. It's about survival in an unpredictable world. Then there's the environmental factor. Despite all the greenwashing and promises of cleaner alternatives, fossil fuels still dominate global energy production. Wind and solar are expanding, yes, but they come with their own limitations. Land usage, intermittent output, and expensive infrastructure. The Liberty Engine proposes something almost radical in its simplicity, a compact, consistent, low-maintenance machine that generates usable electricity without combustion, emissions, or noise. No smoke, no spinning blades, just clean energy that doesn't depend on daylight or clear skies. For a planet in crisis, that's not a luxury, that's a necessity. Lastly, there's the issue of power, literal and political. The global energy market is monopolized by a handful of conglomerates and governments who control access, dictate prices, and profit from scarcity. This creates a system where billions are trapped, paying for something that should be a basic right. Energy is going to be free in the future. But what they didn't figure was that information would be free or easy to transmit and to generate and to store and to, to delete. The idea of personal energy independence isn't just convenient, it's liberating. Devices like the Liberty Engine represent a shift in who controls the future. They put the power, literally and figuratively, back into the hands of the people. And that terrifies the institutions built on keeping things exactly as they are. Remember how Tesla's free energy dream mysteriously disappeared after JP Morgan pulled the plug? History has a way of repeating itself. And this time, the stakes are even higher. The Liberty Engine 2.0 is just a prototype a proof of concept, but it's also a warning shot to an industry built on scarcity. Its creators aren't looking to sell it on late night TV or lock it behind a patent. They're inviting the world to test it, refine it, improve it. Imagine this engine scaled up to power an off-grid home or built into relief camps during natural disasters or integrated into space exploration missions. No refueling, no waiting for the sun, no cranking a gas guzzling backup generator. Now imagine this technology in the hands of ordinary people, not scientists, not billion dollar corporations, but tinkerers, innovators, dreamers, people who still believe the world can run on better ideas. Of course, skeptics abound. They call it a hoax, a trick, a misunderstanding of physics. And hey, maybe it is, but unlike most energy miracle claims, this one comes with full teardown videos unedited, transparent, every coil, every wire, every magnet exposed. If it's a trick, it's a hell of a clever one.
If it's real, it's the start of a revolution. And maybe that's the point. Not to convince the world overnight, but to crack the door, to force a conversation that's long overdue. Are we really going to believe that in an era of quantum computing, space tourism, and AI writing poetry, we still can't generate electricity without polluting the sky or draining a river? Or are we finally ready to admit that we've been sold a lie, that energy must always be bought and never built? What if Tesla was right? And if he was, what else have we been wrong about? Maybe the future of energy won't come from the next government grant, the next tech IPO, or the next overhyped EV battery. Maybe it's already here, in a garage, humming softly, waiting for someone to listen. If that future excites you, terrifies you, or even just makes you curious, don't forget to share the story. Subscribe for more breakdowns like this. Leave a comment, start a conversation, because revolutions don't always begin with protests or policies. Sometimes they begin with a quiet machine spinning in defiance of everything we thought we knew. And that changes everything.